Tony, you've been a successful principal now for a long time, considered a great innovator. Why are you doing what you're doing currently at Silverton? In, in my view, the world's changed drastically. We're closer, connected with other countries. Um, we communicate differently. The children are different. The finances are different. You know, globalisation has, has changed a lot of things. Our school was a really failing school um, for many years, and we needed to do something different to give our children a future. And we weren't going to do a, um, provide for that if we kept doing what we were doing. And so to make sure that our children um, will have a better future. To do that um, meant that we had to change the, the work environment. The learning environment was sort of from industrial era, um, from paradigms gone by. Um, it was imparting knowledge in the old days, teachers at the front of the, 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 the stage and doing all those sort of things. I wanted something different. I wanted the children running into school faster than they're running out of school, and they weren't. Our ch absentee rates was high, things weren't working, so we had to change what we we're doing. To do that meant that we had to do things differently and engage the children and not um, and make sure that they they were on the right track for the future. So the driver for keeping me going was to do something better for our children to make sure that their future is well secure. Uh, what are the shifts that you've made in from the practice that was there when you started to where you are now? I think the first major shift is we're focusing on the, um, the learning rather than the teaching. Um, for many years we used to call it teaching and learning, but now it's on the learning. We know that teachers um, are very strong with curriculum. They were very, very good at designing activities. Some of these activities might engage the children, but they didn't promote the learning. And so now the focus is more around working around to improve the children's learning. And learning is more than literacy and numeracy. We know they are very important and they're the basic skills that you've got to have. But it's those other skills that the children need around collaboration, thinking skills, the deep thinking skills, you know, using the technology. We know that the technology can enhance the learning and we know that from, from evidence that's proven that particularly with boys can really enhance the learning. Making sure that the, the teaching is um, more specific and, and more focused on what the children's needs are. I like the work of um, Vygotsky stuff, you know, taking the children from somewhere to somewhere else. The critical part of a teacher is to know where they are. The old days of assuming that all the children are the same and they're all in that little one little group have gone. We need to focus where those children are, take them to someone else and move them into that little area where the, they, with the support they can um, enhance their learning even more. And that's where the role of the teacher now is more critical than it's ever been before. In all of this, Tony, the thing we know is change doesn't come naturally to human beings, particularly amongst teachers and the community. How did you work with them and get them on board? Interesting question, Greg, because it is difficult. When you're going to make any significant change, to bring people on board um, is, is, is the crux of the whole thing. It's hard to go out there and be a prophet on your own dunghill and you need to bring in people to support you. So one of the um, things that you have to do is to make sure that what you're doing is based on some solid research. I like the work of George Betts and George used to talk about the early days of doing things with the child, not to the child. And that resonated strongly with me. How can we do things with the children and not to them? The old ways of teaching were doing things to the kids. We stood up there and we imparted the knowledge and they absorb it. But if we're doing things with the children, then we've got a chance of enhancing their learning, making them deep thinkers, and take responsibility for their, old, their own learning. Bringing in the staff on board is never easy because you're looking at some significant change. But the the crux of it is to make sure that you've got those critical people around you who will support you. You can make sure that somewhere along the journey you have those little wins along the way and ensure that the staff can take ownership of the process. It's okay to put out, out ideas, but unless you're out there working with the staff, it's not going to happen. It won't happen through osmosis. It's got to happen through some very, very careful coaching and, and working with people to ensure that the path that they're on is the path that you're on. At the end of the day, the teachers themselves want what's best for the kids. They want a better future because a lot of the teachers are parents as well. And they want their children to have a better education than what they had, and they want to make life better for them. So bringing them on is very important. The other important thing is all the stakeholders involved, that's the children, 
the parents and the teachers need to be involved in the process. I think that's very crit um, that's critical to the, to the whole thing succeeding. Because if you don't bring them along the journey, then you're going to get drop out. And the last thing you need is things to fall over because you haven't put in place some of those structures that will ensure it will continue. And so working with staff, coaching staff, mentoring staff, setting in place in your school some strong principles, some of the things that are non-negotiable, and working with them with the staff to make sure that they're on board and they've had some say in what these non-negotiables are is a critical important point. And in all of this, Tony, <laughs> What have you learned in your two decades in leading that school community? I've learned many things, Greg, and I suppose one of the things I learned very early in my career is slow down a little bit. Um, made some horrible mistakes in the first couple of years, not because of where I wanted to go, but the process I was doing, trying to make changes too quickly, not bringing some people on the journey with me and making and not having the right people around me. It was after some of those things that fell over, then we started to realise I need some support, some critical people around me to challenge me in my thinking. And some of them times they'd say, slow down a little bit, um, hasten slower. That was important, bringing those people on and working with the staff in the learning centres was very was critical. Making sure that you bring the right people around you, have them working in the, in the learning centre it, um, also helped in a great deal because what they were seeing was things happening and when they could see things happening and it was working, then they would try them themselves. Rewarding people, rewarding through um, compliments. Um, a lot of it was intrinsic reward because the teachers could see the smile on their kids' faces. You know, kids running into school faster than they're running out of school each day. Kids wanting to come to school, becoming a better work environment, giving them a lot of professional support, not only around times and things like that, but recognising the great work they're doing. Um, sometimes we can catch more flies with honey than we can with a stick. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> that was great.